One of the really unfortunate things about having a YouTube channel with a rather large following is that I get a ton of messages. I get a ton of emails, a ton of messages on Mastodon and Reddit and other social platforms. And I just can't respond to any of them because there's just so many of them. I don't have time to respond to each individual email and direct message and things like that. I read them all. I, I definitely read everything you guys send, but I just I don't have time to respond to them because if I did, if I had to respond to everything, I would never have time to actually make video content or I'd never have a personal life. You know, it would eat up into some of that time. So I do read all of your messages and I appreciate you guys that do message me, but I, I typically don't respond to anything. But the other day I got a lengthy email from a viewer and he asked a couple of really important questions and I really wanted to take the time to respond to him. And it was such an important question that he was asking, I really wanted to do a proper video response to it because I, I don't want to answer this question just to him. I want to share it with many of you guys because I think it's a question a lot of Linux users have. So this gentleman, let's read a little bit of his email. He wrote to me, Hi DT, it's been a while, but I'm still following and watching your videos. If you have time to read and reply to this message, I would be grateful knowing how busy you are. And then he goes on to say, recently I went back to the video on moving from noob to power user that you made last summer. So I made a video about a year ago where I took Linux Mint Cinnamon and I went from noob to power user using Linux Mint Cinnamon. I showed you guys how you can start setting key bindings to open and close all of your programs using key bindings, uh, using run launchers like dmenu. I showed you how you could uh, theme your terminal, theme your text editor, your GUI text ed editor, even things like Zed or Gedit and things like that. And uh, it's a really good video, especially if you're brand new to Linux. Uh, go check out from noob to power user. I'll link to that video in the show description. He goes on to say, after the many years that I've been using Linux, I want to still get away from working as a noob. Too much GUI and point and click. And I would say that's a good idea. It's really a good idea to get away from using the point and click method of, you know, doing everything with the mouse, because honestly, it's hard on your wrists. The more you use that mouse, there's some health benefits actually to getting your hand off the mouse and putting your hands on a keyboard and, and doing as much as you can on a keyboard. The mouse, it can really start causing some carpal tunnel issues. So that's a good idea. Uh, not just as it's not to look cool. You know, a lot of people think it's an elitist kind of attitude. Hey, don't use the mouse, just use the keyboard for everything. No, there's real reasons why a lot of people try not to use a mouse or they get away from using standard mice and go to things like uh, upright mouse or a trackball mouse, things like that. So uh, he, he's on the right track here. Yeah, definitely try to get away from point and click. Reading further, he goes on to say, quote, I've tried to learn more about the command line and after rewatching your video a few times, I have really jumped into my keyboard shortcuts and made some changes and additions like Super W for LibreOffice Writer, Super I for LibreOffice Impress, plus many of the suggestions from the videos. And, and that's a great thing, what he's doing. And that really starts getting you in the mindset that it really doesn't matter what distribution you're on or what desktop environment you're on. Because if you're doing everything through key bindings, you're kind of bypassing the desktop environment altogether, right? Because it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what the desktop environment is. It doesn't matter if you have the GNOME panel or the KDE plasma panel or what menu system you have there because you're bypassing all of that. You're just doing a hotkey to open a program and a hotkey to close the program, right? So you don't need any of that stuff. So that's already just using key bindings, you're kind of making the desktop environment kind of obsolete, right? It doesn't even need to be there. He goes on to write, quote, what really struck me and it had a lot of truth to it was your comment about once you make a lot of these power leading changes, the desktop environment doesn't really matter, which is what I was getting at. He goes on to say, and that is so true. I followed the video on what you did to Mint Cinnamon and replicated much of that on MX Linux, the XFCE edition that I'm currently using. The question that moves me to ask this is if the desktop environment doesn't really matter, what would be the best desktop environment and distro to be on, to have, and then put away? So what he's saying is, hey, if the desktop environment doesn't really matter, what desktop environment should I use? And if the distro doesn't really matter, then what distro should I use? And obviously, if they don't matter, 
it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I think that's the point of if the desktop environment doesn't really matter, then you really don't need a desktop environment. That's really the way to look at it. For example, if I go over to my desktop here, let me switch to my desktop. Of course, this is the Xmonad window manager, but you can think of it as a desktop environment. It's just a desktop environment. I built a desktop environment is a window manager plus a bunch of other stuff. That's all a desktop environment is. So in my case, my desktop environment, I chose the Xmonad window manager. You know, uh, there's Xmonad, the window manager, how it controls windows. It's a tiling window manager. As far as the desktop environment around it, you know, that's all the extra stuff that typically things like GNOME, Plasma, XFCE bundle together, you know, a compositor. I use Compton or PyCom now as the compositor for a panel. I chose the XMOBAR panel, but I could have chose a, a dozen different things if I wanted different panels. I have a system tray over here. This is Trayer that has the uh, icons here. This is the system tray icons. Now, if I didn't want a system tray, I don't have to install one. Or if I wanted a different sys tray other than Trayer, there's a few other standalone system tray applications I could have used. Uh, I'm setting wallpaper with nitrogen, but I could set wallpaper with FEH, or I could set wallpaper with X wallpaper. I could do all kinds of things. I've got several daemons running in the background. I've got the Emacs server daemon running in the background, so I can pull up Emacs quickly. I, I've got several of those kinds of programs running in the background. My session is LX session. That's the poll kit program, the authentication program that's always running. So this is my desktop environment, right? It's essentially uh, my custom desktop environment that I put together. It's not a desktop environment uh, that somebody that maintains a distribution told me, hey, this is your desktop environment. Here's all the programs built into this desktop environment that we've decided are your desktop environment. You don't get to choose you know, your network manager, your clipboard manager, your system tray application, your panel, your menu, your run launcher, right? Because all of that's already decided when you get served up a full desktop environment. So once you start becoming the power user, the power user is really not, it's not like all of a sudden you went from being, you know, not knowing much about Linux to all of a sudden you know everything about Linux. That's not when we say power user. It's more about customization. When you, when you become one of these people that want to have ultimate control over your desktop where you want to pick and choose each and every application and customize each and every application to your specific needs, that's what we're talking about with power users. And when you get to that point, uh, desktop environments don't matter and typically you're not going to get one of the big desktop environments because they're not going to serve your needs because you're going to want to pick and choose different parts of your desktop environment you know different clipboard managers network managers and volume managers things like that that they get in your way if you're using a big desktop environment like gnome or plasma or cinnamon or xfce you're better actually just building your own desktop environment. And what I would suggest is if you like floating window manager, so if you're used to floating windows like in GNOME and Cinnamon and Plasma, then what I would do is give OpenBox a try, the OpenBox window manager. And it's very customizable. I've done a lot of videos on op OpenBox, and most of them, you know, in the early days of the channel, about three, four years ago, right? But they're still relevant today. And OpenBox is fantastic for a floating window manager. Of course, the more you're doing with keyboard shortcuts and key bindings, I would strongly suggest maybe taking a look at a tiling window manager at some point. Uh, if you want a good tiling window manager that's easier to get into than most, i3 is pretty new user friendly. The awesome window manager is new user friendly. And Qtile, honestly, is pretty new user friendly too. And if you want some custom tiling window manager distros that already have the tiling window manager customized a little bit for you so you don't have to start from a complete blank slate, Arco Linux has tiling window manager additions for practically every tiling window manager known to man. Getting back into the, the email here, he goes on to write, if I understand correctly, the base for something like Mint is the same for each desktop version and it's the specific features of Cinnamon, Monte, or XFCE that decorate the distro. So yes, so your underlying base distribution you know, the kernel and the init system and the GNU core utils and all of that. Yes, that's 
the base system, and then the, you know what you typically see, the GUI you see on the screen, your login manager, and then your desktop environment. Yeah, that's just the, the very top layer, right? <laughs> Once you scrape all of that away, uh, yes, your underlying base distribution, you know, it mints the same, no matter if it's Mint Cinnamon, Mint XFCE, Mint Mate, uh, still the same package manager underneath, and, and all the, those Mint utilities. And then he goes on to write, my other question deals with my everyday distro. I began my journey back in the early 2000s with Ubuntu and Gnome 2, which was my journey as well. I started uh, around 2008 on desktop Linux. I actually was using Linux on the server back in the 90s. Uh, but my first full time living in Linux on the desktop was Ubuntu with the old Gnome 2 desktop environment. He goes on to write, and then he went to Gnome 3 and he spent a little time with Zubuntu with XFCE until I had some concerns about the direction Ubuntu was going and moved for a number of years to Mint Mate since it was taking me back to the days of old Ubuntu. And what he's talking about here is, of course, Gnome 2 eventually reached end of life. Gnome transitioned from Gnome 2 to Gnome 3. So... Gnome 2 was dead. So uh, using Gnome 2 on Ubuntu was no longer an option because they either had to move to Gnome 3 or what they ended up doing is they created their own desktop environment, a fork of Gnome 3 called Unity, which I, I liked Unity. Uh, it was okay. Not in the early days. It was kind of buggy, but it was better than Gnome 3, especially in the early days because the first few versions of Gnome 3 were very buggy. So I can understand, you know, especially in that time period, people looking for other options. And if you really liked Gnome 2. Mate was a fork of Gnome 2, so it made sense. Yeah, go to a Mate distribution. So he went to Mint Mate, fine choice, and then he uh, goes on to say a few years ago he discovered MX, and he's been using it. And he's had a few problems with some programs that are written for Debian-based distributions not exactly working correctly with MX. I've had to have the actual Linux developer of iDrive work with me to modify his scripts to get it to work. Along with that, I hear feedback that MX isn't a mainstream distro, and maybe I should switch back to a distro that is more mainstream, like Ubuntu or Mint. Well, my comment on that is, well, I mean, what it's a mainstream distribution. Who decides what that is? Uh, obviously, some distributions are bigger than others. You know, obviously, Ubuntu is you know, the the big elephant in the room, right? Ubuntu's king, uh, and it has a corporation behind it. Of course, that matters. But what does it really matter? You know, I mean, I run Arco Linux. Arco Linux is, I don't know how many users Arco Linux is. I'm, it's gaining popularity, but a very small team behind Arco Linux. It's, it's not, I wouldn't call it a big distribution. I, uh, most people, I'm assuming, wouldn't call it a mainstream distribution. But what does it matter, right? It's, it's a Linux distribution. And if the distro doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Use what you want to use. It's not like you're married to your distribution either. It's not like you pick a distribution and that's the only one you ever use. In your email, obviously, you've hopped a few times. Me, I've hopped dozens of times, right? <laughs> Again, you're not married to these things. Use it. Use it uh, if it's working for you. Keep using it when things aren't working for you. Hey, move to something else. He goes on to write, however, what you hear a lot of the time is that Mint with Cinnamon is the best distro for beginners. I am not a beginner, but not an expert, but you're helping teach towards that direction, but more of an experienced user. So I'm feeling that as an experienced user, I shouldn't be using a beginner distro. Am I wrong feeling that? And would I be best to leave MX and go with either Mint or Ubuntu? Thanks as always for your wise guide guidance and I didn't include his name here because I, I didn't contact the guy and let him know I was uh, gonna share his email here publicly but I do appreciate his message and what he's asking here is okay mint with cinnamon people often say it's one of the better distributions for beginners I've, I've made that comment as well I think I think mint is great for the new to Linux user coming from Windows, especially because Cinnamon kind of has that old school Windows paradigm, the point and click, let's get to the bottom panel and open up the start menu and search for a program and then click on it. Yeah, that's most people are going to be comfortable with that workflow. I, I think most of the flavors of Ubuntu are very similar and they're pretty good for beginners. So yeah, Ubuntu's great, Mint's great. If you wanted to use one of those, yeah, go for it. Uh, MX, I actually like MX. I've actually put MX on some family member machines. So they've broken broken their laptops, their their Windows installations. They bring me their laptops. Hey, can you fix this? And I'll throw you know various Linux distributions on them. But I, I've run MX on those friends and family computers. I'll you know, put them on MX, and most people 
have had nothing but good things to say about that. So MX is fine too. Really, the, the distribution you use, the main thing, especially once you get away from the desktop environment, you start using uh, window managers, standalone window managers. So you're you're not taking the distribution as it comes to you. you typically, you'll wipe out whatever desktop environment that came installed in on it and and you'll create your own desktop environment so none of that stuff really matters what really matters is the underlying base system that we talked about on something like mint or ubuntu or mx it's uh what package manager does it use uh, how are the repositories uh, can you find all of your software in those repositories and the thing with ubuntu and most ubuntu based distributions like mint is the repositories are really good right you're going to find most of the software you're looking for in those repositories mx i believe mx is basing off of debian uh i'm not i think debian stable and you're going to find a ton of stuff in the debian repositories as well so the repositories are good the thing with mx i think it's based on debian stable so the packages may be a little older now as you become more of an experienced user as you say you may not want to be on a really stable distribution like Debian stable or distributions based on Debian stable because those packages can be old, right? You're not going to have the absolute latest version of anything on Debian. <laughs> so uh, you may want to go to something a little more bleeding edge. Obviously, Ubuntu, if you stay on the interim releases and update every six months, you get fresher packages. Uh, Mint, typically is a little older. Ubuntu LTS is going to be quite a bit older. It's more along the lines of something like Debian Stable. Uh, have you ever tried an Arch-based distribution? Because many of them are quite user-friendly. I think you would be impressed with the repositories. If you're kind of new to Arch, you've never really given it a, a shot, I would strongly recommend, especially since you mentioned you're an XFCE user. Have you ever tried Manjaro XFCE? Manjaro is really gaining popularity <laughs> in the last few years. I would say Manjaro is actually a mainstream distribution if you're looking for one because they've really made Arch popular. Like they've really brought Arch to the masses. And the flagship edition of Manjaro is actually their XFCE edition. And it's good. Like it's really good. And the great thing with Manjaro is the Arch repositories are the best in the business. Arch, because you have the AUR available, you will find every program you could possibly want to install, either in the Arch repositories or in the AUR, the Arch user repositories. You will actually have better software availability in Arch than you ever had in Debian or Ubuntu. Also, you're going to get the, the latest packages because Manjaro, which is based on Arch, Arch is a rolling released distribution. It's uh, constantly rolling, so you're always on the absolute latest version of your software. And finally, I would say uh, what you're talking about where people are telling you that this distro is a mainstream distro, but this other distro is not a mainstream distro, or the distro that you're on is for noobs, and this distribution that I'm on is for lead hackers. Uh, ignore all of that. Anytime somebody tries to tell you what distribution to run, especially if they're trying to tell you what distribution or desktop environment to run and you didn't even ask them about it, Ignore those people because those people are typically trolls and they have extreme bias as far as distributions. Many people, unfortunately, many people have this kind of team mentality where I'm on, you know, Team Mint or Team Fedora or Team Gentoo or whatever, you know, distribution. And I want everybody to run that distribution because I'm on it. And, you know, you got to be like me. Uh, just ignore people like that. They don't matter. So <laughs> there's no such thing as a noob distribution as far as there's no distribution that's only for noobs. I, I, I could run Mint. I could run Linux Mint happily. For the rest of my life and be just fine. I could do anything I want to do on Linux Mint just as I can do on Arch or, or Gentoo or, or Slackware or whatever, you know, elite hacker distribution. <laughs> and that's the same thing with, with those distributions. They're not for elite hackers. Anybody could install Arch, right? Anybody that can read can go to the Arch wiki and read the installation page and get through an Arch install. It is not hard. It is not hard at all. Now, uh, 
Is it harder than installing Mint? It takes a little longer. And, you know, it, it, where Arch, you have to enter a few things at the command line, but just a very few things. Like, it's really a quick installation for Arch. So it's not like there's a clear dividing line, like this is for noobs, this is for power users. No, no, that's not really the way it works. And I would, I would ignore anybody that tries to tell you that that's the case. Anybody that tries to tell you what Linux distribution you have to run or what desktop environment you have to run, just ignore them. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Anyway, I don't know if I answered uh, your question. The, the fellow that, that wrote this, I'm not going to share his name. Uh, you know, we want to protect the innocent here. I, I didn't ask him for permission to share this, so that's why I didn't include his name here. But I do appreciate the, the lengthy email, and I do think uh, there was some good stuff in here. And I think a lot of people actually have these questions as far as a distribution and desktop environment, especially once you become more experienced. You know, you, like many of us have been running Linux for years now. You know, Linux, especially really exploded in popularity back in 2006 to 2008 because of the rise of Ubuntu. So you've got a lot of people that maybe don't consider themselves power users, but they've been using Linux for, you know, 10, 12, 15 years now. And, you know, they, they're really comfortable using Linux. They're experienced. They've been using it forever. And they're wondering, hey, is there anything else out there? You know, am I am I really am I still running the distribution that I should be running? Am I still running the desktop environment I should be running? Hey, feel free to look around. It's another thing. Uh, check out virtual machines, virtual box. You know, install all the distributions you want to test out in virtual box. It doesn't hurt anything. Uh, try them out in a virtual machine. See what you like. See what you don't like. And then uh, don't be afraid to hop. Again, you're not married to these distributions. Uh, you know, there there was a time period. <laughs> A few years back where I could be on a different distribution, you know, on my main machine like every month. And that was OK. It was fun. Uh, now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Absy Dallas, Gabe, Lou, Mitchell, Alan, Akami, Arch, Victor, 30, Chuck, David, the other, David, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Polytech, Scott, Stephen, Spin, Wes, and Willie. These guys, they're the producers of this episode. Without these guys, this lengthy rant wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen as well. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because the DistroTube channel is sponsored by you guys, the community. If you'd like to help me out, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. Compared to Windows, there is no mainstream Linux distribution.